tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, everyone, and clap your hands. Amen. This is the Pentecostals of Katie, and this is the Pentecostals of Katie Choir. We want you to worship with them as they sing. Let's do it.
triumph for a minute. Hallelujah! Yeah. Starting to feel like some church on a Friday night. Now listen, there's a difference between having church and having church. Hello, somebody. So we came to have church tonight. Amen. Listen, before you're seated, turn around, give somebody a high five. We got some empty rows in the front. If somebody wants to move up a row or two, that's all right. We're just going to have a good time tonight in the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. From here on out, you are free to stand. You're free to sit. You're free to dance. You're free to run. You're free to do whatever you want to do tonight. Jeremiah and his band came a long way from Kentucky to be here. And uh, so we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. One more time. Put your hands together as welcome Jeremiah Yoakum and the band.
I love them and I wanted that choir just to keep on singing that was shoo back in Kentucky Sharon McKee is a legend I mean she's like she was she, she did a conference there a couple years ago and it's like it's like you know God walked in the room or something when she came in everybody's like whispering there's Sharon McKee there's Sharon McKee <laughs> so we love you all we, we appreciate you tonight we're gonna have church tonight we're gonna have a good time let's sing when I lay my hands God would give him a son. Blessed Isaac was his name, the greatest gift he'd ever known, my Lord. Then came the day. Who would have dreamed God would say You've got to give him to me Now on this mountain You will prove It's you and I said Or it's me and you and when I lay my eyes down, glory, with a broken heart, but my father's proud, and on this altar where he lay, just to find it wasn't him. God wanted me. Listen. Now most of us, I dare to say, we've got an Isaac in God's way. But in Katy, Texas on Friday night, on this altar you can prove not your Isaac that God wants. He's wanting you. Woo, glory! And when I lay my Isaac down with a broken heart, but my father's proud. And on this soul where he laid just to find it wasn't him God wanted me and on this altar where he laid just 
to find it wasn't him God wanted me oh glory to God thank you Jesus out on the waters storms are raging high the waters around them they were troubled that night fear filled their hearts and they thought they would die but they failed to remember that the master was nigh you see, he spoke the words and the winds on the sea. Just like he will mind if I'll just remember that he lives deep inside. So why should I worry and why should I fear when the very same Jesus, he stays always near. He lives in my heart and he hears when I cry and I can call on his name till the storm passes by. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We read in the Bible how he walked with them, brought light to their darkness when the way grew so dim. How great it would be to have his steps leading mine and to walk with the Master all of the time so when trials come and death is so nigh i'll just search for the master i know he'll be there right on time so when i'm in trouble woo, and my body's in pain you see all i have to do glory is just call on his name why should i worry and why should i fear when the very same jesus he stays always near he lives in my heart and he hears when i cry and i can call on his name Till the storm passes by Oh, why should I worry And why should I fear When the very same Jesus He stays always near He lives in my heart And He hears when I cry And I can call on His name Till the storm passes by I can call on his name Till the storm passes by I can call on his name Till the storm passes by Well, go for it Praise the Lord How many is glad you can call on the name of Jesus? until the storm passes by once again it is so good to be here and uh this is I've, I've been through texas through lots of airports and things but i've never been to texas so i got me some boots everybody says you got to wear boots to texas <laughs> they don't look like cowboy boots though they look like church boots but i'm not a cowboy i'm from kentucky we're hillbillies so but it is an honor to be here. This next song I'm going to sing, I love singing it. I love the song. And I remember the first time I sung it, I heard it. I, I learned it from the holiness people back in eastern Kentucky. And uh, I, I heard them say, I said, man, I love that song. I'm going to learn that song. So I learned it, and I got up in church and sung it. 
And I seen, you know, everybody's, we was, we were shouting to it. The Holy Ghost got to moving. We were singing and shouting. People running around the church. But you, I seen some people give me that little grin, like something. I was, I was like, well, what's going on with this song? And so after church, some of the people, you know, they've been compromising and listening to country music come up to me. And they said, <laughs> they said, you know, it's a country song. I said, it is not. I said, I learned it from the Holiness Church. They said, that's a Reba McIntyre song. I, and I, don't, I don't listen to that stuff, so I didn't know. So I went home and I pulled it up on YouTube. And sure enough, Reba, how you brothers doing? Reba McIntyre recorded this song, but it didn't sound like the way we sung it. After we got done with it in Kentucky, this is what it sounded like. It says, I got a sky full of angels watching over me. Come on. man been talking about the end of time the Lord knows I'm ready it don't worry my mind and I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me well you can take my possessions you can take all of my gold Nobody but Jesus is going to take my soul. And I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You see, walking through the darkness, I don't need no more light. My faith in Jesus is going to be my guide. And I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. Well, you can take my possessions, you can take all of my gold. Nobody but Jesus is going to take my soul. And I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a I'm full of angels watching over me. Well, the river's rising, but I've got no doubt. My faith in Jesus is going to bring me out. And I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over Let's sing it again. You see the river was rising but I've got no doubt my faith in Jesus is gonna bring me out and I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me well you can take my possessions you can take all of my gold nobody but Jesus it's gonna take my soul and I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me come on now you see back in Kentucky where I'm from we like our tambourines and cymbals so I came prepared tonight come on now the Bible says study to show yourself approved. So don't pick up a tambourine unless you know how to play it, okay? I heard a big old amen from your pastor's wife right here. So there's a lot of the old-fashioned churches that still have church on Saturday night. So if you were to drive back in the mountains of eastern Kentucky on Saturday night and get out of your car, you'd hear something that sounds about like this.
no doubt my faith in Jesus is gonna bring me out and I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me well you can't take my possessions you can't take all of my gold nobody but Jesus is gonna take my soul and I ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me I've got a sky full of angels watching over me I've got a sky full of angels watching over me Thank you tonight. Woo! It don't matter what need you coming here with me within your life tonight. God can meet you right here tonight. There's a miracle in this room, and it's got my name on it. Woo! There's a healing in this room, and it's here for me. Breakthrough in this room, and it's got my name on it. So I'm gonna put a praise on it. Woo! I said I'm gonna put a praise on it. Just look at somebody right now. Say there's a miracle in this room, and it's got your name on it. Come on, tell them. There's a healing in this room, and it's here for you. There's a breakthrough in this room, woo! And it's got your name on it, and it's got your name on it. So somebody put a praise on it. Somebody put a praise on it. There's some people who do not look like you've been going through some things. I can see it on your countenance. But I'm going to tell you, there's a miracle in this room tonight. And it's got your name on it. There's a breakthrough in this room. And it's got your name on it. There's a healing in this room. And it's got your name on it. Because of you being through what I've been through, you would be praising too. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be dancing too. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be shouting too. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be praising too. Come on! If you've been through what I've been through, you would be dancing too. Woo! Woo! Listen, I know you've heard this all your life because I have. People say, you Pentecostals don't have to act that way. You don't have to run and dance and jump and shout. You don't have to do that. Then they say, why do you do that? And you know, we always have our generic answers, you know, because we believe in praising the Lord. When you go to a ball game, you get excited. You know, we got all our little answers that we give them. But I heard this story a few years ago, and it blessed me so much. I'm going to tell you tonight. Down in Pensacola, Florida, at the Pensacola Naval Air Station, there was this millionaire. He was a developer, and he developed land and built houses. So he bought this big field adjacent to the Pensacola Naval Air Station. 
And he said, told his friends, he said, I'm going to build houses on this, in this field and then I'm going to sell them. People said, you're crazy. People ain't going to buy those houses next to the Pensacola Naval Air Station. It's too much noise. But he didn't listen to them. He bought this field, he built the houses, and he sold the houses. Well, the people laid down to go to sleep. They woke up the next morning. And can you believe they had the nerve to complain about the noise? So they begin to go down to the mayor's office, to the city council, said, listen, y'all gonna have to help us. We're gonna have to do something. We've spent our money, we bought these houses. We have no peace, there's too much noise. Of course, you know what they told them. You knew the Pensacola Naval Air Station was there when you bought your house. There ain't nothing we can do for you. So these people kept moaning and complaining. I'm getting to why we do what we do. The people kept moaning and complaining. So finally, the Pensacola Naval Air Station, I seen a picture of this on the internet. They built them this big, huge sign, and they turned it towards this housing development. And the sign said these words, pardon the noise, it's the sound of freedom. When people wonder why you dance, say, that's my freedom. Pardon the noise, that's my victory. Pardon the noise, that's my healing. That's my deliverance. It's the sound of freedom. Say, pardon the noise, it's the sound of freedom. What I've been through, you would be praising too. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be shouting too. If you've been through what I've been through, you would be dancing too. Woo! Come on, play. doing tonight we're good God praising good God praising is when you come to church you say Lord you've been good to me so I'm going to praise you I call it kind of you know acute praise you're looking around look at her shoes look at his suit you know Lord it's Friday night we're at this concert we're going to praise you we're going to lift you up it's you know but you don't want to really sweat, you know what I mean? 
but a really good God praise is when you don't care who's looking at you. A really good God praise is when you say, Lord, you're being really good to me, so I'm going to really praise you. A really good God praise is when nobody else is shouting, you're going to shout. When nobody else is sweating, you're going to sweat. I believe right now it's time for a really good God praise. Come on, lift him up. Praise him. Woo! Don't let anybody out praise you tonight. Don't let anybody else shout you tonight. Woo! Jesus, he will bring you out, pick you up, turn you around, set your feet on solid ground. He's my help in the storm, gives me strength to carry on. Call him up, he'll answer, for I know the Lord should be there. I told the Lord a long time ago, I said, Lord, when I go to your house, you've been good to me. Lord, you've kept me. You've anointed me. When I go to your house, I'm not going to let anybody out praise me. When we got this one little seven-year-old granny that sits on the back row, buddy, she gives me a run for my money every service. She shouts during the church announcements. We'll be saying, we're having a bean supper Sunday night. Lord, thank you, Lord. And that's what she does. She'll say, hallelujah, bless you, Lord. She'll bend over into her hands like that. I'll say, Sister Brenda, we're just giving announcements. We're not even having church yet. She was, and I asked one time, I said, why do you sit in the back? You need to come up front. She said, she calls me little Jeremiah honey. She's known me all my life, so she, she'll think, she, she still thinks I'm little. And I told her, I said, I'm 41 years old. You still call me little Jeremiah honey. I said, you should keep on doing that. That's all right. I said, why do you sit in the back? She said, little Jeremiah, honey, I don't want any distractions when I come to church. I just come to praise the Lord. So she said, I sit in the back where nobody's bothering me, where there ain't nobody around me, and I can just shout and do whatever I want to do. And I told her, I said, well, Sister Brenda, I told the Lord that I won't let, let nobody out praise me. You give me a run for my money every service. That's the frame of mind when she come to the house of the Lord, and we're not going to let anybody out praise us. We're not going to let anybody out shout us. Come on one more time. Let's put our hands together and give him a really good God praise. Give him a praise that he's worthy of. Woo! God, thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence tonight. As I kneel in the darkness, in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance that everything's going to be all right. Lord, I see another battle. It's out in front of me. And I'm afraid I won't be able. And I'll go down in defeat. Then the Lord said, do you remember? Where I brought you from Just take a look behind you At how far you've come 
And every time you ask me Didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking That I wouldn't see you through? Cause didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind It hushed and I gave you peace Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you Just so you wouldn't fall Didn't I leave all of heaven Just to die for your sin I searched until I found you And I'd do it all again Now she's talking to the Father In a house that was once a home She said, my bills are coming due, Lord. In six days, it's not that long. She hears a voice so still and low. He says, I've moved like that before. I can do this little thing. Oh, and I will give you so much more. Didn't I calm the rage and see? I spoke to the wind It hushed and I gave you peace Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you Just so you wouldn't fall Didn't I leave? heaven just to die for your sin I searched until I found you and I do it all again didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin I searched until I found you And I do it all again. Let's sing that line right there together. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Let's just love him tonight. Counts the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shores. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures great and small. And he knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry And he knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of day I know I'll be just fine Cause He knows my name And He knows your name tonight No matter who you are No matter where you're from The Lord knows you tonight Hallelujah Oh, I don't know what tomorrow may bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I 
don't have all the answers to the questions of life, but I know in whom I have believed, and he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed by the pain, I can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. If you know what, sing it with me tonight. He knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine. Glory. He knows my name. Oh, I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise your name. Come on, love him in this place tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We will have your way tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's somebody here to the night. The enemy has told you that God has forgotten about you and that nobody knows your name. But I'm going to tell you, the devil is a liar. And the devil uses this trick on people. Say, he says, well, you're not a fourth generation Pentecostal like the rest of these people. So... Your daddy's not a pastor. Your granddaddy's not a pastor. Your mama wasn't a Sunday school teacher. So God can't really use you. That's the kind of lies the enemy tells people. Let me tell you a little story tonight. There was a little baby, October 5th, 1951, that was born in an old slum apartment, Ray Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. When he was five weeks old, his mother wrapped him up in an old dirty suit coat and abandoned him in this old abandoned apartment on Ray Street in Cincinnati, Ohio. Left him to die. His father had another family in Kentucky but he went up to Ohio for work and he had met up, met up with this woman who was a prostitute. She became pregnant and had this baby and while the daddy was gone to work wrapped him up in an old suit coat, left him to die and freeze to death. This was up in November by that time. A neighbor heard him crying, came into the, the old abandoned apartment and got him and, and kept him until his daddy came home from work. She found his daddy, said, your woman left this baby, he just left him to die, wrapped him up in an old suit coat was all he had. And I heard him crying and came and got him and handed the baby back to the daddy. The dad began to cry. He was, a, he was a horrible alcoholic, a functioning alcoholic, the father was. The father began to cry. He said, I don't know what to do with this baby. So he took the baby and he gave it away. He gave it away. He said, take this baby. Do whatever you want to with him. Give him away. Put him in an orphanage. I don't want him. I can't do nothing with him. But my woman's gone. Well, long story short, he ended up in Kentucky at Grandma's house. How many thankful for good old Grandma's? And as this little boy began to grow up, Grandma had already raised 10 of her own kids, so one more wasn't going to hurt. As this little boy began to grow up, he was sitting out on the front porch on a Saturday evening along about 8.30, about six years old, and he heard a noise. He looked over to his old mom. He said, Mom, what's that noise? She said, oh, son, that's that holiness church down the road, one mile down the road with no PA system. 
I'm talking about a really good God praise. At six years old, God was already doing a work when he heard them holiness people have in church. Well, as time went on, he got into high school. He was not good at sports. So he said, what can I do to be popular? So he said, I think I want to play music. So he ordered him a guitar out of the Alden's catalog. The guitar came in through the mail. He began to play rock and roll music, play at the VFW halls, play around wherever they could play. When he was about 16 years old, his cousin lived up at the holler beside him. He came and said, I want you to go to church with me. And he said, you want me to go to church? He said, yeah, I want you to go to church with me. He said, there's a guitar player down there that's really, really good. You'd really like him, and there's a lot of pretty girls. He said, so I agreed at 16 years old to go to church with my cousin. Well, guess where they went to church? The same little hole in this church he heard sitting on the front porch when he was six years old. Well, guess who was at that little hole in this church? My mama was there. Hallelujah. That's my father back here that I'm talking about. Because of a nameless woman, we still don't know who she is. A nameless woman that found a little baby abandoned to die and nurtured him until his daddy got home is the reason I'm standing here in Katy, Texas on Friday night. Don't you let the enemy lie to you and tell you that God don't know who you are. Don't you let the enemy tell you that God can't use you because your daddy ain't a preacher and your granddaddy ain't a preacher. God can take a little baby that was born to a prostitute. They had to put beer in his bottle to get him to go to sleep at night. He was already addicted to beer at six weeks old. That's what she fed him in his bottle. They had to wean him off of alcohol at six weeks old. Nobody wanted him. Not even the nameless woman wanted him. She gave him back and said, here, do what you want to with him. So I believe there's some people here tonight, the enemy's told you that. He's tried to sell you that that thing, you know, that God can't use you. But I want to tell you tonight, He knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every tear that you've cried. And He's meeting you right here tonight in Katy, Texas on Friday night to tell you that He loves you and that He knows your name. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers To the questions of life But I know in whom I have believed And He knows my name Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed by the pain, I can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. Cause he knows my name And mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loosed And God, we believe it Yes, we can see it that wonders are still what you do. Woo! And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. And God, we 
believe it? Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do. I said mountains are still being moved. Does anybody believe it tonight? And strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. That wonders are still what you do and miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming miracles happen is anybody ever believing God for a miracle tonight? Is there anybody that needs a miracle in your body right now? I want you to come up here tonight. If you're believing God for a miracle in your body tonight. I know that miracles happen when you move. Come on, let's line up. Let's believe it tonight. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming.
bodies are still being raised and giants are still being slain and God we believe it and yes we can see it that wonders are still what you do I said mountains are still being moved strongholds are still being loose and God we believe it yes we can see it that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised giants are still being slain God we believe it and yes we can see it wonders are still what you do miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming miracles happen when you move Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming. pages of my life have turned and time has rolled away the greatest deeds that I have done they won't help me on that day and all my earthly treasures that I have laid away they'll be to me just a memory glory and this you'll hear me say I'll take Jesus Woo. oh I Jesus, you see, I've tried those earthly pleasures and they failed. When you see the gates of heaven, what will the master say? Which one did you take? As they gambled for the robe he wore, they chose a worldly trail. You see, they didn't think 
of eternity as the soldiers drove the nails will we learn by what they have done or will we make the same mistake Jesus or the world my friend Tell me which one will you take? But I'll take Jesus. Oh, I'll take Jesus. You see, I've tried those earthly pleasures. And they fail When you see the gates of heaven What will the Master say? Me or the world, my child Which one did? you take how many can say I'll take Jesus tonight Let me see. I love the old songs that I learned from my mama we sing one all the time it says there is coming a day when no heartache shall come no more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eye but all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day, what a glorious day. Oh, there will be no sorrow there. There'll be no more burdens we're going to have to bear. No more sickness or pain. There'll be no more party over there. But forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day. Woo! What a glorious day. gonna be I said what a day that's gonna be Ooh, when my Jesus I'm finally gonna see I just can't wait to look upon his face the one who saved by his grace and he takes me by the hand and he leads me through the promised land I said what a day I said what a day I said what a day What a glorious day. What a happy day. What a shouting day. Is anybody going with me? Ooh, what a day that will be. What well, glory.
I've heard of a land on a far away strand. It's the beauty. Of the soul built by Jesus on high, where we never shall die. It's a land where. Never grow old, we will never grow old in a land where we'll never grow old. We'll never, we'll never grow old. Never, never, never grow old. A flat. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's word He has given. How beautiful heaven, heaven must be. Oh, the angels so sweetly are singing. Up there by the beautiful sea, sweet calls from their gold hearts are ringing. How beautiful! How beautiful heaven must be. Let's all sing it together. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy. The happy and free Fair haven of rest for, for the weary How beautiful heaven How beautiful heaven how beautiful heaven must be. Oh, glory to God. I get started on them old songs, I can't hardly quit. 
My goodness, they're so rich. They're so full of life, so powerful. Thank you, Jesus. I'll sing this without no music. It says, in this world, go up in this world, we have our troubles. Sometimes alone, some sometimes blue. But my hope of life eternal brightens all our hopes anew. Oh, I don't want to get adjusted to this world, to this world. I've got a home that's so much better. I'm going to go there sooner or later. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. I am longing for the coming of my Savior, Lord and King. I can hear my loved one singing a new song I'd like to sing. Oh, I don't want to get adjusted to this world, to this world. Oh, I've got a home that's so much better. I'm going to go there sooner or later. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. That was in our old hymn book growing up as a kid. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take a break just for a minute, and we're going to receive an offering. I'm going to have Brother Daniel come and testify. Then Mama's going to sing, and it'll be a blessing to you tonight. Amen. We put a video on her, uh, on of her about um, right before Christmas. It's had over a million views. <laughs> and Mama, Mama's probably the most, do y'all say humble or humble in Texas? Humble. Well, in the country, they say humble without, you know, without the H. Just um, Mom is the most humble person I've ever met in my life. She's a godly woman. And uh, she raised me. Mom, mom, listen, my mom is a professional Pentecostal. I told you, me and my twin sister was born on March 24th, 78, Good Friday. We was in church on Easter Sunday. We had another sister that was two, so she had three under three. And my dad probably never changed a diaper in his life, and that's the truth. <laughs> like she said... <laughs> But mom was a professional Pentecostal. She'd set me on one side, my sister on the other side. She could shout and whoop us off the same. That's how mama did. I call her a professional Pentecostal. But uh, I'm thankful that mom and dad's with me tonight. Mom's going to sing for us. But um, everybody asks the way this ministry works. I'm, I'm not, I don't call myself a singing group because I that ain't, ain't really what I am. I'm just, uh, I'm a minister. And the way this started several years ago, I would just sing around home, you know, the, our local churches and things. I'd sing out of state a little bit. But uh, a few years ago, my brother-in-law came to me and he said, I put one of your songs on YouTube. And back, you know, this was like 10 or 11 years ago. And I thought only famous people was on YouTube. And, you know, I, now I found out anybody can put anything on YouTube. So I said, oh, my goodness, I'm famous. I'm on YouTube. I said, what did you put on there? And I thought he was going to say, didn't I walk on the water? Or Jesus loves me. He said, funeral plans. I said, you have got to be kidding me. My introduction to the world is funeral plans. When I die, let me die speaking in tongues. And <laughs> I'm going I'm to sing it after a while. I said, everybody already calls us snake handlers anyway. Now they're really going to think we're crazy because I'm singing, when I die, let me die speaking in tongues. Well, I woke up the next morning. I thought, I'm going to go, because you know people comment on that. I was like, i got to see what people say. It had 20,000 views. I thought, oh, my goodness, we may be on to something here. Then it, as time went on, just more and more views. And this touched me so much. There was, a, there was a, a message that came in, and it was this man from Croatia. And, and he was typing in very broken English. He said, I, I don't understand words, but I sit at computer and cry because I feel spirit. 
And the Lord showed me right there that the Holy Ghost is a universal language. The Holy Ghost that can go right through the through people watching tonight, go right through the waves, over the sea, touch a man in Croatia that can't even understand the words to the music. He could feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right through his computer. So I said, I told my brother, I said, please put on something a little more, you know, mild, like didn't I walk up in water or something? So people started calling, will you come and sing, will you come and sing, will you come and sing? I said, and I told for like a year or two, I said, no, I said, I'm full-time at my church. We all work full-time jobs. Like we can't go out and sing. So and I just let people know. So finally people just started getting really angry. said, we want you to come and do our camp meeting. We want you to come and do a conference for us. Come and sing. So I met with these guys. They were all single then. They were all, they were, most of them were still teenagers. I said, listen, guys, there's people wanting us to come and sing. I said, well, this is what we can do. we got a 15-passenger church band. We can take the back seat out and cram in keyboards and speakers and, and drums and all kinds of stuff and go sing for these people. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. You know, you could just buy them a cheeseburger. They're just going to have to go along. So I remember our first trip, we went to Alabama, and we rode seven or eight hours on a church van. And, oh, y'all, y'all rode in church vans. You just know they're not comfortable at all. So I said, guys, we're gonna, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do it right. I said, let's just believe God. Let's, let's get us some really good equipment and, and buy us a, a nice vehicle to travel in. Let's get us like a nine-passenger conversion van that's got nice seats and stuff. I said, okay. So we just started believing God. And a lady came up to me. She said, the Lord told me to, to help you get a bus. I said, a bus? She said, yeah. And I said, do you know tars on them things is $2,500? I ain't singing for no tire. <laughs> and I ain't singing for no alternator. I'm singing for Jesus. I said, we want to get a van. <laughs> so it, it, it wasn't much long after that we had purchased a van, and we've, we've been debt-free the whole time. The Lord's, uh, you know, had people give to us. So everything you see is paid for. But what we do is we go out about twice a month. We can only do Friday nights because all these guys worked yesterday. And then we got the late-night flight into Houston. So, so people say, well, why can you only do Friday nights? What's well, cause they, they, these guys don't have jobs? We've never missed one service at our home church. That was our first, that was our first dedication. We said we're gonna, we're not gonna miss our home church. We'll be faithful and loyal to our home church. So my dad's glad of that. So <laughs> we've not missed one service at our home church. This we're we're in our tenth year right now, going out twice, doing two concerts a month. So uh, we 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 turned down a lot of invitations just because it's we just we, we like I said we're gonna do like twenty five a year. But we've always wanted to come to Texas. And when the brother contacted me about coming, I said, yes, we've been wanting to go to Texas. So that's why we're here tonight. It costs us a lot to get here. I bought, I, and I buy the cheapest plane tickets I can get. I set them back by the toilets on the back of the plane. But I flew eight of us here for under $1,700. I thought that was good, 200 and some dollars a piece. So. And then uh, Brother Gene, Sister Jude over here, they drive my equipment. They've drove to Connecticut, to Oklahoma, to Arkansas. They drive it all over the country. And pick us up at the airport when we get there. And he's never charged me one red cent. The Lord called him to do that. But it's still, but with us flying, amen. Appreciate you, Brother Gene. Yeah, it took him 15 hours, 15 hours. But with us flying, the gas for the vehicle, our hotel rooms for two nights, five rooms for two nights, and buying food. And I pay these guys just a very small amount to, to do this. They all have families now. They're all married with kids now. But they're still traveling with me, and I sure do appreciate it. They give me all their, va- they save up their vacation time to come out and do this, 25 services a year. So this meeting tonight, just to break even, is, is right around $5,000. And uh, I'm not, I don't believe in sending up, taking up 30 minutes off his offerings, trying to manipulate you out of your money. If it don't come in tonight, it'll come in one way or the other. One lady walked up to me about three years ago. It's the best year we've ever had. <laughs> she came up to me in January and said, the Lord told me, she said, how much does this tour cost you for the whole year? I said, well, I said, with the offerings that come in and everything, I said, 60000 would really average it out. Because I said, some of them is only 2000 some of them is 8000 some of them is 5000 I said, it's about 60000 She said, they wrote me a check, said, I'm going to pay for your tour for this whole year. I did that whole year and didn't worry about nothing. It was a wonderful year. And then some people say, the Lord told me to pay for the plane tickets or to pay for the gas or whatever. So, but I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, if you want to, we're, you know, we're not going to reject it. <laughs> I have a beautiful wife at home. I have three wonderful children. We've been married 17 years. Married to my first wife for 17 years. And uh, i got a little boy, Judah, who is 12. Jada is 7. And Jera is 3. And I'm getting ready to turn 42 in March. And then we're done having kids. Uh, Brother Danny right over here on the organ. He's been traveling with me from the beginning. He can play the organ, the drums, the bass. He can play anything he sets his hands to. He's, he's playing the B3 tonight. 
married to a wonderful, he met his wife on one of our tours in Georgia. And uh, they have a little boy just turned one a couple days ago. This guy right over here in the blue suit, we used to call him Little Zach because he used to be real little and had a, he would sing, had a real high voice, but he's grown up now. He's 19. We can't call him Little Zach no more because he's big now. He, he just got married last year. He married my second cousin. And uh, they don't have any children yet because they only been married a year. That's the way you do it when you're sanctified. You get married and then have children. Do y'all still do it that way in Texas? Sanctified people marry, then have kids. Okay. Brother AJ right over here on the base. Married to a wonderful lady. He's got twin daughters. How old are your girls? Two? Three. They'll be three in March. Brother Jason Pratt on the drums back here. Married, has two, two daughters. Man, there's a lot of girls. How old are your girls? 13 and 14 and 10. Then right back here on the keyboard, Brother Daniel Miller. He's my right-hand man. One of my best friends. He's, he married a girl from Louisiana, and her home church is here tonight, some of them. They drove five hours to be here tonight from Jonesboro, Louisiana. And uh, uh, Daniel Taylor's been married six years. And (laughs) I gotta tell you this story's funny. He was uh, on the internet one day watching YouTube during his lunch break at work and him and another guy from church. And this is what young guys did, you know, back when they were teenagers. They get on YouTube to make fun of people. Because I've said, I mean, I'm just telling you that's what they do. They go on there and try to find singers that sound real bad and make fun of them and laugh at them. So they was on there trying to find bad singers and make fun of them when they was about 18 years old or 19 or something. So anyway, they seen this girl. She was sitting peeing that. And, and Daniel said, he said, click that one. Let's watch this one. So they clicked on it and she started singing. And Daniel he goes, like, he goes, I'm going to marry that woman. No, that girl. He said, I'm going to marry that girl. So he sent her a message on YouTube and said, I love your singing. It just blessed me so much. Well, she, no, no response. Didn't hear from her. So he waited a month or two. I love your singing, just let it no response. So the third time he said, have you ever heard of Jeremiah Yoakum? I played piano for him. I love your singing. He said, she responded in five minutes. So I'm responsible for him being married too. <laughs> they have two little girls, three and one. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for my band. They're very anointed. And I promise you one thing, you ain't gonna see them playing in a hoop nanny. They play music for Jesus and that's it. Amen. I am too. I'm. I'm. A, I'm in a weird situation. I'm. 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 I'm stuck in the middle somewhere. I'm too. I'm too Pentecostal for the for the Southern Gospel realm. And I, I don't know. I'm just. I've. I'm always been in a weird position. I. I just. I, I never have really got out and, and tried to go big time because for one thing that's not my con no, that's not what God has called me to do but I just I have a hard time not being Pentecostal and I've tried so many times just to stand up here and say you know uh, through many dangers tolls and snares and I get to the third verse and I feel a chill down my spine and that's it I, I just gotta let it loose and I can't contain it and so <laughs> so we just we just do what we do we just go around twice a month we do this all over the United States. So we're glad to be in Texas tonight. And I think Brother Matt's going to come. Brother, when did you come in? Have you been here the whole time? You. You have? I just seen you when I was talking a while ago. You all should have told me he was here. I was, you know what I was doing? I was, I was like, Mark Lowry told me he was coming and he ain't here tonight. I'm mad at him. <laughs> He's been, I didn't know you. I get to sing and I look over everybody's head. So it's good to have you, brother. I remember I was sitting in Rafferty's with my mom and dad. This was about nine years ago. And that's when, that's before I had all these guys to help me. And I was selling CDs out of my living room. I had a big duplicator set up. And my wife said, I wish you'd move that mess. I said, honey, I'm making money. I'm selling CDs. I'm on the YouTube now and I'm selling CDs. And I had, and I, I'd get a notification every time I sold a CD. Come and said, Mark Lowry's purchased your CD. I said, well, there's got to be somebody else named Mark Lowry. And I found my old text, my old message today. I went back and looked. And I sent a text and said, is this the Mark Lowry? I put the in all capital letters. He said, yes, it is. He said, I've been bringing everybody on my bus, showing them funeral plans when you dance out from behind that piano. <laughs> I thought you was Baptist. He said, I am. <laughs> but anyway, a, a few years went by, and uh, I remember... Of course, I felt, man, I felt really famous when Mark, uh, Mark Larry, I thought, Mark Larry knows who I am. I've listened to him my whole entire life, you know. I've still got your VHS tapes of your comedy show from back in, I guess, the early 90s or something. 
And I, I, we was, you know, on Sundays between church, you take naps and stuff. So I was taking a nap one Sunday between church. It's been seven years ago, I guess, six, seven years ago. And the phone rung. It was Mark Lowry. So I woke up real fast. I said, you know, usually I push decline on Sunday evening because I'm sleeping. So I said, hello. You know, you try to clear your voice for people think you're sleeping. Hello. And uh, he said, hey, Jeremiah, it's Mark. I said, good to hear from you. He said, I guess you heard I'm leaving the Gaither Vocal Band. I said, yeah. He said, well, what? He said, why would you take about, think about singing with them and, you know, singing in my spot? I said, I mean, I was just like, I was like, I can't believe this. I can't believe Mark Larry's on the phone telling me I need to sing with the Gaither Vocal Band. I thought for about 30 seconds, and I remember I said these words to you. I said, I can't think of any young man in America that's a gospel singer that wouldn't be honored by you calling them and asking them this. But I said, I know I'm in the perfect will of God. And I know I'm doing exactly what God called me to do. Am I allowed to say what you said next? Because you probably don't remember. You said, well, <laughs> I don't know if I should say, I'm allowed to say it. You said, well, you're making the right decision. Bill's 77. He's going to be dead in 10 years anyway. <laughs> That's what you told me. <laughs> That's what he said. And I got so tickled to my wife. I said, Mark said, I was making my decision because Bill's going to be dead in 10 years anyway. So, <laughs> thank you, brother. Appreciate you tonight. Well, I don't know what a hootenanny is, but apparently none of these guys are going to be playing in one. Shindig? You know what Shindig is? What do y'all call them things here? A bar? Okay. Yeah. But a bar, a hootenanny is more like a Kentucky get together with. Drinking moonshine, a dance hall, yeah, stuff like that, yeah. I ain't, uh, honky tonk, yeah, y'all know what honky, yeah. Honky tonk, that's the word here. Why don't you put your hands together for Jeremiah? He's coming back. Listen, I know that um, traveling is not, is not cheap, and he very well told you what the expenses are tonight. And uh, I travel full time myself as a gospel music singer. Drove in today from Alexandria, Louisiana in the morning. I head back out to uh, southeast Mississippi. And so I know what he's talking about. It's expensive to be on the road. And uh, he came here tonight. I'm telling you, he came here tonight with not one expectation. Uh, he hasn't asked the church for any money. He came here directly and totally by faith. And so uh, every cent that you give tonight in this offering is going to this ministry. It's not going to the church. It's not going to anybody else. It's going to this ministry, and he told you that uh, it costs five thousand dollars just to break even. Now, listen, there may be one person in here tonight who could just write a check. Who do they make a check out to? Redemption Road Church. If you want to write a check tonight, that's who you make it out to. Charitable donation receipt, Redemption Road Church, or if you're doing cash, you can do cash. But can we pray and just ask the Lord what He? wants us to sow into the ministry can we do that why don't you stand i know some of you have been sitting and standing dancing all that stuff but um we're gonna stand and let's pray and we want we truly want to ask god god what do you want me to sow into this ministry maybe there's one person who can just write a check for five thousand or a thousand or five hundred whatever it is and we know that truly you cannot absolutely cannot outgive god amen Amen. So let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for every person, God, that has gathered here tonight. We thank you. I know many drove uh, many hours, God, to be here and to worship together. So, God, we pray right now, God, that you would bless Jeremiah and this band and this ministry. God, we pray that you would use these folks to do it, Lord. Uh, we open up our hearts and we open up our minds. And, God, we sincerely ask you, Lord, what do you want us to sow into this ministry? What do you want us to give in this free will offering tonight? And, God, we know that as your word says, it will be taken, it will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will pour into our bosoms. And, God, we pray that you would do that tonight in the one and only saving name, the name of Jesus Everyone said amen. Clap your hands. The ushers are going to come. They're going to pass the plates. Clap your hands. Let's continue to worship together. You can go ahead and be seated. I also want to mention two very special friends of mine here tonight. Brother Jeremy and Brother Darren. Brother Darren Givens, Brother Jeremy Price. I went to uh, Israel with a group of pastors in December. 
And we, we kicked off, I mean, we, we got together right before we, the plane ever took off from the airport. We, we had a kindred spirit, and I was, I was looking around trying to find some Pentecostals because, you know, there was everybody on that tour, and I thought, I went over and said, where do y'all pastor at? And they told me, I said, okay, I'm going to say but y'all. <laughs> but anyway, we, was, uh, we, was, we went down to the Jordan River. It was about the third or fourth day to get baptized. They was baptizing us all in the Jordan River. And Pastor Jeremy was standing right behind me, and we got closer and closer. And I turned around and said, hey, brother, why don't you just baptize me? He said, I sure will. So when we got up to the Jordan River, Brother Jeremy Price baptized me, and that was the coldest water. December in the Jordan River in Israel, it was cold water. But Brother Jeremy baptized me in the Jordan River. What, what an experience. I might Brother Daniel come now. Brother Daniel Miller is one of my best friends. He's been with me from the very beginning, kind of my right-hand man. When y'all order CDs and don't get them, he's the one that ain't mailing them because I don't, I don't mail them no more. So <laughs> thank you, Brother Daniel. Praise the Lord. Good to be here tonight. Good to be in Texas. And good to see some of my wife's, she calls them family. And there's two there that were the youth pastor's kids when I married her six years ago. And they were this big. I mean, they were tiny. Now he's taller than me. Time changes. Amen. But I'm glad to be here tonight. Good to be with Brother Rob's sister, Shara. My wife thinks you're all just about as famous as probably y'all think Brother Jeremiah is. So we're just glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to be part of this ministry and be able to support Brother Jeremiah and play for this band. I'll testify real quick and get out of the way. I'm from Danville, Kentucky, and I was raised in a single-parent home. I have, there's seven of us, six boys and one girl. I'm the third oldest. There's two older than me, and the rest are falling behind. We were raised in a little Southern Baptist church called Southern Heights Baptist Church there in Danville, Kentucky. And Mom took us to church every time the doors were open. We've, I, the only thing I've known my whole life is church, whether it was passing out flyers, going to prayer meetings, Sunday morning service, Sunday night service, Wednesday night service, Saturday night, they'd call prayer meetings. We'd go to that thing at the Baptist church. I, tell you, I learned that the Baptist kind of prayed. After I got in the Pentecostal church, I learned the Baptists were a little bit more committed than the Pentecostal people when it come to praying. Because you call a prayer meeting and five people will come forward. At the Baptist church, they all come. I better get off everybody's toes. You'll be mad at me before I leave this pulpit. <laughs> but I met my wife on, like Brother Jeremiah said, on YouTube. It was because of Brother Jeremiah. I messaged her and told her that she sang wonderfully. I was like, this is awesome singing. This is so, so talented, so anointed. She didn't respond. So I thought, well, well, the thing is, one of the boys from church messaged her too and said, you're great, and she responded to him. I thought, what in the world? I said, well, I play the piano for Jeremiah Yoakum. She said, oh, I love his singing. So that started it. I drove, I drove uh, 13 hours on a Wednesday morning, drove 13 hours, got to service that, I don't know if I went to service that night or not, but I got to Louisiana on Wednesday night. No, it was Thursday morning real early. I got there, Thursday night went on our first date, went on a first date to a Mexican restaurant in Monroe, Louisiana, and on the way back, I stopped at a gas station, got back in, I said, I'm going to marry you, and she just looked at me like I was crazy. And that was six years ago, and today we're married. I'm thankful that the Lord used Brother Jeremiah in this ministry to bring us together. But I'll tell you where I come from. I come from a single-parent home at the Baptist Church. I knew nothing about Pentecost, knew nothing about the gifts of the Spirit, knew nothing about what goes on, what you're seeing tonight. I was just raised in Little Southern Baptist Church. We just had an upright piano. Nobody in my family is musically inclined by no means. Nobody can sing. Nobody can play music. And one day I was at home after... I had been to church my whole life. I was at home on a Thursday night flipping through the TV on the public access channel. Come Redemption Road Church. Brother Jeremiah and Sister Ronnie, his mama was up singing. He ain't never done me nothing but good. I seen the choir in their choir robes and they were swaying. And I thought, man, this is awesome. They sound awesome. They had the drums, the organ, the keyboard. The Everybody was getting with it. I thought, we don't have this in my church. I'm going to want to see what's going on here. So I was watching it and all of a sudden something happened that I'd never seen happen in church before. I seen Sister Ronnie run across the platform, and I seen the choir members run out of the choir, run around the building. I said, we don't do this in my church. What in the world? So I remember we had some old blank VHS tapes, and I put them in the VCR player and hit record because there was something that was intriguing to me. There was something that, was, that said, this is awesome. I want to see what this is about. So they come on TV every Thursday night at 7 o'clock, I found out. So every Thursday, I'd put a, v, a blank VHS tape in, and I'd pop that thing in and hit record. If we had to go somewhere, I'd make sure I was recording it. If I had to get the church before them, I was going to record Redemption Road Church because I want to see what they're going to do this week. 
So I recorded them and recorded them. And my sister, she had a 66 key Casio keyboard that they got at a yard sale for five bucks or something. And she, nobody knew how to play music. She just banged on it. So I stole the keyboard from her. I said, I want to play the keyboard like Jeremiah Yoakum. So I, at the time, we didn't wear suits and ties to church then. I, I mean, we dressed nice for church, but didn't wear suits and ties. I said, Mom, can you go buy me a suit and tie? I want to wear a suit and tie to church. She said, okay. She said, went and bought me one suit with a white dress shirt and one tie. I wore it every service, and I even wore it on Thursday nights when, when Redemption Road come on television. So what happened was my little sister gave me, she was probably six then, gave me her little keyboard. I'd get in front of the TV, didn't know anything about music, did not know what a chord was, didn't know how to play anything about music. And Brother Jeremy, I'd get behind the keyboard and start singing. Well, I'd get behind the keyboard and start banging. I'd put my suit and tie on, and at the time I had a bow haircut. I was probably 12, 11 or 12 years old then. And I said, Mom, can I get my hair cut like Jeremiah Yoakum? And she was like, who in the world is Jeremiah Yoakum? So she said, well, I, don't, I, had a, I had an old CD they were handing out at the local Walmart of Brother Jeremiah. It was called a sample CD. It let everyone know what the, the music sounded like at Redemption Road Church. I had one of them, and somehow I had a picture of him. So I said, this is Jeremiah Yoakum. I want my hair cut like him. So he went down to the barber. I said, I want my hair cut like this guy right here. He cut my hair like that. So Thursday night rolled around. You better believe I was happy. I'd go down on Thursday night, and I, I was in my own bedroom, but I turned that keyboard, crank it up real loud, turned the TV up real loud, and my family hated it. So I came home one day. I ran a paper route. I came home one day, and they had moved my television and my keyboard to the basement where the wash and dryer was at. And there, I tell you, this is the gospel truth. And they put a mirror up there, down there too. Because I was trying to figure out how the Pentecostals did their, you know, that leg dance. So I stand in front of the mirror on Thursday nights. I didn't know anything about the keyboard. I stand in front of that mirror, put my suit and tie on. And I'd, every time Jeremiah would do that foot dance, I'd learn how to do that foot dance. And every time Jeremiah would say, woo, I'd say, woo. Every time Jeremiah raised his hands real big, I'd raise my hands real big. Every time he banged on the keyboard, I'd bang on the keyboard. And I said, Lord, whatever it is that that man's got, I want it. I said, Lord, whatever it is those people got on TV, I want it. I said, Lord, I want to be able to play the piano like that. I knew nothing about what a G chord was or what a C chord was. Didn't know nothing about it. I said, Lord, please teach me how to play the piano like Jeremiah Yoakum. Well, I was probably 9, 10, or 11 years old then. I was still going to the Baptist church. And I... Uh, I, they had scheduled a concert over in Danville. I did not know that Brother Jeremiah lived 20 minutes down the road from us. I thought he was on television. He was famous. I thought he was hours away. But he was coming to Danville to the Methodist church. There it was, Brother Jeremiah, Pentecostal meeting at a Methodist church. And I was the Baptist boy there, excited to go. I came in on the front row. I had bells on. I was on the front row with my suit and tie. I said, I'm going to fit in with these people. I don't know anything that's about to go on when I get there. All I know is I want to be there, and I want what they got. So I remember I was on the front row. I said, Lord, whatever it is these people got, I want it. I said, I want it. So I began to seek the Holy Ghost. Didn't know what the Holy Ghost was. Like I said, I come from a single-parent home. I never met my biological father. I didn't know who he was till about five or six years ago. I seen him out in public and found out who he was. I never met him. We never had a conversation. He didn't take me fishing. He never took me hunting. He didn't take me to church. He didn't teach me how to pray. He didn't teach me how to seek the Holy Ghost. He didn't teach me how to get baptized or live for Jesus. I didn't have that person in my life, but I had Mama. And Mama raised all seven of his kids to love the Lord and do what we could for the Lord. But I started, I, I got, whenever, after I got saved, I said, Lord, I know there's something a little bit more than what I got. There's an old song we sing at our church that says, When I got salvation, I needed just a little bit more. So I went down to the altar and I began to seek the Lord. I wanted the Holy Ghost and I prayed that it would come I came up from the altar speaking in the unknown tongue and I, I learned that after I got in Pentecost but I remember at that Methodist church I said Lord whatever it is that them people got up there whatever it is pastor Yoakum's got brother Jeremiah's got Lord I want it I said I want it so I was still going to the Baptist church and I was starting to pray for the Holy Ghost I didn't know what the Holy Ghost was what it would do to you if it would make you fall on the floor I watched them fall on the floor I watched them even run I watched them speak in tongues I even watched some of them roll I said I don't know if it's gonna make me do that I just want it I said whatever it is I want it I want the Holy Ghost so I was going to the Baptist church I prayed for six months I said Lord Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Didn't even know what I was praying, Brother Rob. I said, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Like I said, my daddy didn't teach me. My mama didn't teach me. The preacher didn't even tell me this is how you get it. All I said was, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. So six months went on on a Sunday night at the Baptist church. I came up to the altar. There were some young people praying. I got down on the altar and I began to pray. And I wasn't even seeking the Holy Ghost at that moment. But all I remember was laying on my hand on one of those girls there and praying. And something come on me that came on 
on that television on Thursday night. Something come on me. I begin, I was praying in English and all of a sudden something happened to me. I began to pray in a language that my mama didn't tell me this is how you get it. My daddy didn't say repeat after me. The preacher didn't say let's go into the back room and this is how you get it. No, I got the Holy Ghost because it was real. And tonight I'm here tonight to tell you I'm in Katy, Texas to tell you that the Holy Ghost is real. He'll baptize you. He'll fire baptize you and he'll fill you. He'll let you know when nobody else loves you, when nobody else wants you. Listen, like I said, I came from a single parent home. I felt like I was a nobody. The people people say, what are you doing standing on the pulpit in a Pentecostal church in Katy, Texas? You should be an alcoholic. You should be on drugs. You should be out in the world. You should be doing the things of the world. What are you doing standing on a pulpit talking about the name of Jesus Christ? I'm here tonight to tell you that God's no respecter of person. It don't matter if you come from the lowest of lows or the highest of highs. If you're third generational Pentecostal, if you're fourth generational Pentecostal, Pentecostal, or if you're like me, a little Baptist boy, God can use you. I said God can use you. I'm thankful tonight that God found fit to use a little Baptist boy in Danville, Kentucky. And to come all the way to Katy, Texas and to let you know that he's a God that will baptize you. He's a God that can save you. He's a God that can deliver you. He's a God that can keep you. When I felt like nobody else wanted me, he wanted me. When I felt like nobody else was there for me, he was there for me. I'm thankful that there's a God who cannot fail me. And I'm thankful tonight for this ministry. I don't want to preach. I'll get out of the way. Me and my wife serve at the youth pastors at our church. And we have a lot of young preachers that are coming up in the youth group. I said, when you preach, preach. Don't just get up and be boring. I said, preach. I was raised in the Baptist church, and I tell you, the Baptist people know how to preach. They preach at the Baptist church. I watched, I've been in church my whole life, Brother Mark, and the Baptist people know how to preach. I remember when the preacher was, he was preaching one night, I wasn't even paying attention. And I was sitting at the second row to the back, and he began to preach hard, and something struck me that night. And he said, somebody needs to come pray. And I said, I ain't, it ain't me, I ain't listened all night. I began to cry for no reason. And I knew right then I needed to pray. I come up and prayed and found the Lord that day. So I'm thankful tonight to be here. Thankful tonight for Brother Jeremiah. If it wasn't for this man here, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I know my hair kind of looks like it, but it's got stuck that way because it looks good. So I didn't want to change it. And I still believe in wearing suits and ties. That's why we kind of matched and all of us matched now. We still believe in wearing suits and ties to church. But I'm thankful for this man. If it wasn't for him... Like he said earlier, me and my wife, wouldn't, me and my good wife wouldn't even be married because she didn't have nothing to do with me until Jeremiah Yoakum. But I'm thankful for your brother and thankful to be here tonight. Like I said, I told you earlier, I never played, I've never learned how to play the keyboard by someone teaching me. And people after service will say, you played so well. How, how did you learn? How, I didn't, nobody taught me. I just watched him on TV and said, let me play like that. And it just, it just happened. I, I had random dreams about it, wake up, learn how to play the keyboard. So that's the Lord taught me how to play. So I'm thankful tonight for this ministry and thankful tonight for your ministry and being here tonight. We love the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you what, it would be a dream of mine come true for me and Sharon McKee and Mark Lowry to sing a song together. It's a shame I've only got one microphone. Would you look what I found? Would you just look what I found up here? I found two more microphones. <laughs> now listen. I mean, this is completely unrehearsed, unplanned. So if it sounds bad, it's Mark and Shara. <laughs> now y'all need to get your phones out. This is going to be an epic moment. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm good. Come here. This is my first time. I want the good mic. Oh, he this took is, my mic. Now listen. <laughs> can I let this is amazing, Sam. Thank you, brother. Yeah. I, I I went to one of his concert or one not your concert, one of his um, um, shows in Kentucky and he made me come up and sing a song for free, so I'm gonna make him tell a joke for free. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, I am one of those people that He's discovered on. him on the internet. And uh, through another, a friend, and I was blown away, so I'm thrilled to be here tonight. What are we saying? I'm going to sing something y'all know. Let me hear the key of B. Okay, that's good. He, he stole my mic. I'll use this. He transposes. I feel the touch of hands so kind. 
and tender they're leading me in paths that I must run and I'll have no fear when Jesus walks beside me for I'm sheltered in the arms of God so let the storms rage high the dark clouds rise they don't work
up with that. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. He Hallelujah. Well, this is the one. What? Lord and Lord. What's that? Okay. I don't know where that's coming from. They're still on. Oh, there we go. We fixed it. Okay. Well, this is a song that started it all several years ago. A song called Funeral Plans. Come on now. Between the pages of an old family Bible, I found dates of births, deaths, and old revivals. Then I came upon a page, it was written by a feeble hand. It said, This is my last request, and these are my funeral plans. Lord, when I die, let me die speaking in tongues. Let it ring in my ears All of these songs I've sung Lord, give me the strength to praise you Speak your name one more time Then have your angels carry me Over to the other side Now, Lord, I've lived a long life Now my race is run I can't wait to leave here I got nothing left undone I've got everything in order Tell my children not to cry Because I've left them a road map They can meet me in the by and by Lord, when I die Let me die speaking in tongues Let it ring in my ears All of these songs I've sung Lord, give me the strength to praise you Speak your name one more time then have your angels carry me over to the other side. Go tell my friends and neighbors, tell them not to weep for me. I'm going to live forever. I've finally been set free. Go tell them not to mourn or to miss me when I'm gone. They can shout all around my graveside because it ain't my final home. Lord, when I die, let me die speaking in tongues. Let it ring in my ears all of these songs I've sung. Lord, give me the strength to praise you. Speak your name one more time. Then have your angels carry me over to the other side. Go tell my friends and neighbors, tell them not to weep for me. I'm going to live forever. I've finally been set free. Go tell them not to mourn or to miss me when I'm gone. They can shout all around my graveside because it ain't my final home. Lord, when I die, let me die speaking in tongues. Let it ring in my ears. All of these songs I've sung Lord, give me the strength to praise you Speak your name one more time Then have your angels carry me Over to the other side Hallelujah. Woo! I want you.
you all to welcome my mother tonight. She's going to be a blessing to you. Amen. Mama, sorry we got it. Just sing whatever's on your heart. That's why we do it at home. Sing whatever's on her heart. <laughs> what are you going to say? I feel really bad of being up here after that Gaither moment. <laughs> I want to see Jesus Cause he died for me If I never walk upon Streets made of pure gold If I never sit beside a crystal sea if I never see that mansion prepared to be my final home I want to see Jesus cause he Door me when I stray. I want to feel those nail scarred hands gently brush my tears away to thank him for each drop of blood that flowed down Calvary. I never see Jasper walls, twelve gates of pearly white. If I never sit beneath the tree of life, if I permit just to enter. See Jasper walls, twelve gates of pearly white. If I never shade beneath the tree of life, if I permit just to enter. Gently brush my tears away to thank you for each drop. 
people flood that flood down Calvary. I want to see Jesus cause he died for me. I want to see Jesus cause he y'all for hanging in here with us tonight it's been wonderful i know so many songs i i I just i could sing all night because you know kentucky we got songs for everything songs for no matter what you're going through we got a song for it you know in the city when y'all when y'all giving an altar call you'll sing just as i am without one plea but in kentucky they got songs like this they're trying to get people to come to the altar i'm giving you a warning one of these mornings Gabriel's gonna sound his trumpet loud first of all the dead in Christ are gonna rise no need to run sinner you can't hide no need to run sinner you can't hide that's their altar call song then they got, they got, I call them re- rebuke songs, you know. People in the church ain't living right. They got songs just for that, rebuke songs. If they think the church is getting too worldly, I, I have been in service where they sung this song. Will you let down the bar, let down the bar, compromise with sin. You have let down the bar, the sheep got out. How did the goats get in? You said our preachers were too plain. Grammar they did not know. So you've let some educated iceberg in. The Holy Ghost had to go. Children, you've let down the bar, let down the bar. Compromise with sin. You and they'll get to shout. How did second verse? Well, the sheep are careful of what they eat. Green pastures you must bring. But the goats don't know the difference. They'll chew on any old thing. Children, you've let down the bar. Let down the compromise with sin. You've let down the bar. The sheep got out. How did the goats get in? Oh, that's just one, two of many. They got one. He goes, Samson. I'm in a different. I'm in a different key. I'm just telling them. Sam, I'm not there either. Go, they'll, they'll go, Samson. They hold that long as they can. Son, oh, Samson. Don't you let Delilah cut your hair. They even got a Samson and Delilah song. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> I got a bunch of them. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time, but sooner or later he's going to cut you down. There's a verse and it talks about a woman. Let's see. Uh, you, how's that verse go? Um, it is, I, Elvis did record that, but they sang it at the Holiness Church. 
you know, run and hide, slip and slide, trying to take the moat from your neighbor's eye. Let me tell you, brother, as sure as you're born, you better leave that woman alone or something like that. Anyway, this is a good one here, though. I, this is my last one. And then uh, as, soon, as soon as I get done with this, don't leave. Just give me one minute. I'm going to tell you about some CDs I got for sale. Let me hear it uh, be flat. This was written by an old preacher back in Kentucky, Brother Claude Ely. Wrote this song. He was dying of tuber was it tuberculosis, dying when he was 12 years old. He laying on his deathbed, he wrote this song. He, he got healed and lived for many, many more years. And wrote this song. It says, Where there ain't no grave. Down. I said there ain't no grave that's gonna hold my body down. When I hear that trumpet sound. gonna get up out of the ground cause there ain't no grave that's gonna hold that's gonna hold my my body down well go down yonder Gabriel put your foot on the land and see but Gabriel, don't you blow that trumpet until you hear from me. Well, I looked way over yonder, and what do you think I see? I see a band of angels, they're coming after me. Well, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. Down. When I hear that trumpet sound, gonna get up out of the ground. Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Come on, Daddy, play your guitar. Well, you can take me out to the graveyard You can lay my body down But on that resurrection morning I'm coming up out of the ground Sing and meet me, Jesus, meet me Won't you meet me in the middle of the air? I'm gonna rise to meet my Lord Gonna say goodbye down here Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down When I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna get up, get up, get up out of the ground Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Gonna hold my body down Come on, one more time, let's pray
Will somebody say praise the Lord? Thank you so much for coming tonight. I hope y'all don't think I'm crazy after this meeting tonight. I love you all. We've enjoyed this. Uh, Daniel, come real quick and tell them what we've got back there. We do have some CDs you can sit on right quick. Then we're going to leave. He's going to tell you about the CDs right quick. We got some T-shirts. We got all kinds of things. The the, the uh, you know this, Sister Shara McKee. You know this. The product. You, I caught you talking. That's all right. The the product sales helps, don't it? When people buy product sales. And I want to thank Pastor Rob McKee. We went on iTunes this year, and he baby stepped us through the whole process of how to go on to iTunes. And uh, I mean, he just get, <laughs> endless knowledge of how to do this. And uh, you all really encouraged me when you were in Kentucky a couple years ago. You said, you need to go on iTunes, you need to go on iTunes. I'm just old-fashioned. I'm, I know I'm only 41. My dad knows more about technology than I do. I just, it gives me a headache. I just, I'm just really old-fashioned. And I don't like taking notes on my phone, so I like to sit down with pencil and paper and write down notes. So these guys make fun of me all the time. But I just had never went on iTunes, and you all really encouraged me to do that. And my, I released... This CD says, I'm not tired yet. This was recorded live at our church, at our camp meeting last year. It's just a great mixture of songs. It, the I'm not tired yet is, is a, it's a black gospel song, choir song. This has got the new worship song, the Psalm 23. This is how I fight my battles. This has got the old song, it's a highway to heaven. You know that song? So it's got some old hymn, hymns on there. Feel my way every day with love, that's an old hymn. And then my little boy sung his first song on this CD. And uh, it's, it's real special to me. Anyway, Brother McKee, you helped us so much get this on iTunes. And the day it released, it went to number two. It stayed at number two on iTunes for two and a half days. I never could beat that Lauren Daigle. Somebody needs to go kick her off there. I never could beat her. I mean, we, we, I, mean I, I kept, we kept, we kept, go by it, go by it, go by it. We never could. So I don't know. How, I don't know. It's probably a huge gap between one and two between me and her. Then in uh, October... I released my most requested. It's a, it's a, it's a two-disc thing. It's got 20 of my most requested songs on it. We released it. It went to number three and stayed there for a couple days. But thank you, Pastor McKee, for helping us know how to do that. So that's been a blessing to us. So 